Yes, ma'am. Um, when the students entered the council, some of them were seeing one settler, one bullet. Is there any comment on that from any of you? Well, the, 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 a, broad, a broad answer for me is that in a democracy, the voice of protest must never be allowed to die down. And in situations like this, people say all kinds of things. And uh, you cannot talk, stop people to say whatever uh, they want to say. Um, Yes, ma'am. I'm Sandra from the SABC. I just want to uh, follow up with that question. There was quite a lot of, um, I suppose, confrontation at the meeting earlier on between some students and yourself, Archbishop, and also with uh, the Vice Chancellor, physically preventing you from leaving. Um, that speaks to beyond being a robust debate about the issue. What are your feelings on how things went tonight when the students stormed the venue? I think that, uh, for me, it uh, revealed the deep anger uh, that the students have, or the frustration, or whatever you might call it. Uh, but at the end of the day, they agreed to leave the chamber uh, to enable us to uh, finish the business. In fact, I was saying to them, ironically, you came at a point when we're going to make a decision. And the decision, according to uh, the debate that was going on, was going to go this direction. So it was unfortunate that there was that kind of uh, intervention. But that again, it reflects uh, the level uh, of uh, uh, anger in terms of some quarters. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, hopefully um, it will uh, uh, result in a facilitated pro process in transformation. But on another note, in my uh, mother tongue, is it Tosa, uh, there's a phrase which says, uh, uh, which means, you know, there is hope for the future. And I think if the young people of this country can feel so organized, so uh, uh, caught up in this whole issue of transformation, there are so many issues in our country which require a robust student body, a robust university, a robust citizenship uh, to address uh, the issues that confront the broader society. So it brings back the memories uh, of the leadership uh, of universities, of students uh, in days gone by. So my hope, uh, Mr. Mohapa, is that from this experience, we can move into the bigger issues, not just only transformation as it affects uh, the university, uh, but also in the broader uh, transformation issues. My wish and hope and prayer, Vice Chancellor, is that we could develop uh, a charter for transformation or a policy uh, for transformation owned by all, where we can benchmark uh, our progress. I know that we're working on these things, but I think if we can a showcase as we move forward together, uh, having learned from this particular situation. If I can add on the question of the, um, the protest that uh, intruded into the council meeting, which is um, your question. Um, you know, clearly, clearly it was a, a sort of uh, show of force and an attempt by uh, students by the student by one part of the student group. I think we should uh, recognise that by one part of the student group. There were students participating in the so in the council meeting, and that was proceeding according to our uh, normal governance. There was a, another group which invaded and wanted to um, disrupt the meeting and insist that uh, this was not uh, that the meeting shouldn't continue. And I think that the council did the right thing, which was to say. We will not. Uh, we we would we would either adjourn or we would wait. But we would only continue when we could have a, a proper meeting, and that was uh, ultimately what happened. And it was interesting that, as the chair of council says, uh, all that had to happen was a vote. There was in fact no more discussion there was at, at all uh, once once we reconvened, um, which signals, I think, that 
uh, the vote and all the discussion had been happened had happened and was not influenced by the uh, by the intrusion itself. So I do think it's unfortunate. Um, I think that it uh, makes it uh, that I think uh, the the way the governance of the university, the governance of all structures, needs to uh, proceed uh, by the rules. And in in the end, this one did. And so I think it was uh, a victory for uh, law and order and, and proper governance. Um, yes, ma'am. Question is, Massa from Eyewitness News. You said the statue would be removed tomorrow at five o'clock. Where's the statue going to be moved to? There was talks of it being positioned in another place on the campus. Will it be off the campus completely? Um, it, will be, it will be off the campus completely, but it will be in a place of safekeeping, in a storeroom somewhere which we will hire, which we have hired. Um, and, the, and it's under the supervision of Heritage Western Cape. Um, so they, uh, we, we are, it's our statue still, and we're responsible for making sure that it's safe. It's not no one else's statue, no one else will do that. Um, so we have to look after it, carefully move it, keep it in a, in a safe place, while the process of uh, reviewing, uh, going through the, the considerations, the public consultation, the other things that Heritage Western Cape has to do, gets undertaken. And perhaps if I could just follow up on that question, um, Vanessa Poon from SABC. Um, the process um, with the Heritage Council itself, is there any indication as to how long this will be? And then also, the, the outcome of that decision, ultimately, uh, does it mean that the statue will, after tonight's meeting, it will be removed from campus permanently? Um, or is that also dependent on what Heritage Western Cape will decide when they consider the application? The law says that we may not decide to move it permanently or to touch it at all. Only Heritage Western Cape can make that decision. And so... We are asking them, we're putting in a formal application tomorrow to say we would like it to be removed from the campus. But we've already agreed with them that should that on the basis of the council decision, that if the council decided that we did want to remove the statue, that we thought the statue might be at risk and very difficult to protect. Because once the decision is made and everyone knows that it's, uh, the decision is made, uh, groups may come along uh, and try to remove it themselves. And our job is to protect it from damage and from being uh, removed uh, inappropriately. So we agreed with Heritage Western Cape and we've issued a joint press statement this evening that they would be, uh, they've given us a certificate for an emergency removal uh, for safekeeping. But it's a temporary removal until they've made their decision. We don't know how long that would take. Yes, sir. I'm to the SRC president, and that is on the occupation of the main administration building. Is that still going to continue um, now that the statue is coming down tomorrow? or? Um, yeah, I was just going to like, leave the building now. I mean, from our side as an SRC, we, we deliberated on this uh, for quite some time on Tuesday and decided that uh, you know, we should cancel, you know, uh, 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 resolve that the statue should, uh, needs to be re uh, removed uh, and the SRC should end the, the, end the occupation. Because that's the thing that we've been uh, uh, saying at the beginning, that we, we need to be given a date as to when the statue will be removed. And the SRC did resolve that, you know, uh, they are in favour of, of, of any occupation. One more question. Um, who is going to fit the bill for the removal of the statue? Well, I don't think the SRC's got the money. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm afraid it's going to be my budget. Yeah, <laughs> Vice Chancellor's budget. Definitely not from the church. <laughs> 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 uh, Lauren Lees from News 24. Um, you say that you're looking at other monuments as well on campus. Um, Sorry? You say that you're looking at other monuments as well? Such as well, we're going to... We, we're doing an, an audit of all names of buildings and symbols that might be regarded as... Um, well, that are controversial. In other words, some people feel that they shouldn't be there or that they reflect uh, a prejudice or a, uh, um, a make people feel particularly uncomfortable. Uh, and so, uh, for example, the name of our main hall, Jamison Hall, uh, is an obvious one and is probably one of the first ones that we'll consider. So the first step is to uh, review them, to, to get, to assemble the list and identify, anyone can identify something they think should be considered. Then we will uh, develop a more systematic set of criteria that we can use to, re to review them. And we will do that also in, con in conjunction with Heritage Western Cape. So we preferably don't have a two-stage process each time uh, and that and we expect that we will have completed that process by the end of this year. 
There we are. No further questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen from the media. Thank you, Vice Chancellor. Thank you, President of the Association. Have a great evening. <laughs> Have a great evening. <laughs>